I'm Alexandria Slater. And I'm Ryan Coleman, and we are part of the Unifrance Critics Lab. And today we both saw a movie called Dalva, or Love According to Dalva, by a first-time French director named Emmanuel Nico. Um, we both loved it. Absolutely loved it, Fav yeah. Favorite film of the festival so far. Can we say that? Yeah. Yeah, th I, then it so, is. So far, yeah. who knows? It's only a day. It's a bold statement, but I agree. It's Yeah, bold but true. So it's... Uh, um, Emmanuel Nico, she's made a couple shorts. She was a casting director, which I think really is apparent in the movie because it's a lot of non-professional actors and they're all exquisite, so believable, so naturalistic. Yeah. She also worked in a crisis center where she met troubled teens and even younger children, which gets into the inspiration for the movie. Yes, yeah, so the film follows the story of Dalva, a 12-year-old girl who has been sexually abused and groomed by her father. Um, she, this film starts with the opening scene of her sort of experiencing emotional torment as she wrongfully, she believes that the police are wrongfully ripping her father away from her. She doesn't really understand the severity of the situation and what she's actually gone through. Um, the film then delves into the care, uh, the foster care centre where she's placed into the temporary home, um, and we see Delva dressed as uh, in like older women clothes, like business attire, yeah. and her hair's like scraped up. Mm -hmm. She's got dark lipstick on, and she doesn't appear as a child. It's very, yeah. it's very sad and devastating to watch because it's obviously influenced by the. Um, the abuse of a father who's tried to sort of make her grow up too yeah. quick. And the film is so ingenious because I don't know about you, but for a while, it took me a while to realize how old she was and what actually happened. Because yeah. the first scene in the movie is the police actually separating her and her father. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is an adult couple. Yeah, she and they doesn't had... call him, she calls him Jack. She calls him by his name. So that's like straight away, yeah. you, you, do, you don't assume that it's gonna be her dad because yeah. why would you? It's, and when you come to that realization, it is genuinely gut-wrenching. Yeah. Yeah, and the basically the whole movie charts her basically coming to under, everybody's telling her this is wrong, and she just keeps saying to people, well, why can't a father and a daughter, I mean, he was, he'd been grooming her since she was, I mean, it's, I think they had said eight years, yeah. and she's 12, so since she was four or five, six, yeah. and apparently Emmanuel Nico met or heard a story of a six-year-old girl who this happened to, and the original idea for the movie was her thinking, well, what would be, this girl be like at 12? Yeah. What, would, what, what would be happening in her life at 12? And that's where the story kind of kicks off. I think as well, what I love so much about this film is that it isn't too gratuitous in the fact that it doesn't give too much screen time to the dad or doesn't give him like a, a character arc or anything. He's, whilst he's relevant to the story of, of Dalva, we don't see him and it really focuses on emotional female support and building other women up and we see um, one of the people she meets in the foster centre called Samia who at first sort of picks on her but then they start to look out for each other and care for each other and then she meets her mum and it's just all you see Dalva getting built up by these women around her and I think that is a beautiful part of it yeah. is the, the, the female support. And I think it's also just such an incredible um, kind of anatomy of the impact that sexual abuse can have on a person because yeah. as opposed to a lot of other movies where it happens to someone in a, at an adult stage where you know what normal life is before that and then something yeah. traumatic happens and then you have to kind of recalibrate mm -hmm. she's only ever known abuse so she's normal and her father has normalized yeah. the abuse for her she so she has to come to understand that her normal is abnormal for everybody yeah. else and it's heartbreaking yeah, it because is. i mean i read somewhere in her interview that she said something like tenderness love, paternal care, and sexuality are all wrapped up in her yeah. father, and she can't separate yeah. them. And you see that, I think, through her relationship with the, the care, the foster caregiver, and trying to navigate how to have a relationship with a male figure who isn't her father, and it, it her trying to work that out in her brain and what's right and wrong, and she doesn't know is genuinely heartbreaking, but it's important to see that side of um, sexual abuse and grooming because we need to be able to see the signs and I think that's why this film is so good because it does platform that and shine a light on sort of the signs and how it can manifest. Absolutely. I think that a movie like this, I can imagine that there will be people who will object to a, 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 a story like this even being told yeah. given that she's so young. People get upset if when these kind of stories are told about Lolita. Yeah, Lolita and you know, so um, yeah, but I think, I mean, this unfortunately happens everywhere, yeah. all around the world, with all sorts of people. And this movie is just, 
I I haven't cried this long in a movie in no. a I very cried all long my time. I, <laughs> yeah. I had makeup on before this, but it's all gone. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So highly recommend. Definitely.